have great fun and you've very kindly shared. And if you're new, if you just come to us for the first time, I've uh, had a good Christmas and, and birthday, uh, which is near Christmas, and I got this amazing Dark Ops Viking ship, which I made up as a video for that on the channel. Also got this amazing uh, building, this futuristic building here. Wow, amazing, isn't it? So, uh, the 10 mil game in that one with Drop Zone Commander and um, Epic, I guess you could use that for as well, couldn't you? It's coming out this year, I think. Well, that's something to put up later. I've got a guillotine as well from CT Combat. I'll do that another time. Um, also, I got this amazing sloop. Here we are. Look, I even made the little wheel move. Bizarre. Look at that. Very proud of that. A bit too proud of that, to be honest, but uh, you know, I quite enjoyed putting this together. So we've got this amazing sleep, that's great. So um, I was well pleased with my well pleased with my haul for Christmas. And then something else came along, another gift. Another gift from Dark Ops itself. Look at this. Are we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> oh my goodness. It was like a gun going off, wasn't it? Like it gets it's this. It's a Dark Ops frigate. There we are. So I'll get it all in. That is how big. That is how big this thing is. It's uh, it's massive. Uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is it eight or nine different sheets? There we are. You probably count that better than I will. Um, uh, not seeing so well myself. But, um, you'll be able to count those, I'm sure, on the on on the video. Um, of uh, MDF, different plies of that. I think there's a uh, thinner ones there for the detail. There's a detail sprue and then there's thick ones for making the body of the ship. So I'm going to, if you will allow me, share the opening of this uh, amazing model. Look, look at it. Can you see? Can you see? Let me see. There we are. Can you see that? That is a tw um, uh, a 24 gun frigate. 12 guns on e either side. It actually comes with a uh, cannon. Um, I think you put the radio on yourself, but it comes with metal cannon uh, and carriages for the cannon and everything. So I'm going to have great fun, I think, putting this together. So what I'm going to do is uh, unbox it for you if you're uh, willing to share that with me. And thank you for your time in letting me open it with you. So here we go. Um, wow, where to start? Wow, I'm going to get the knife out, I think. That's where I start. instructions but that's not a problem that's not a problem it's in what you've got here is the picture of the finished product there we go I've got them over there I think so D um that can be away it's a really good idea isn't it you see what so what we have is full instructions full instructions exist for this model on um the dark ops youtube channel so it's a video description, a video uh, set of instructions, step by step, piece by piece, sprue by sprue, uh, it will tell you how to put this amazing piece, set of pieces together. Um, the first thing it does is tell us to make lots of space on my table. So there we go, lots of space to put sprues um, as I work out what I'm doing with this. So, um, yeah, let's go back to um, the pack itself. So, got these, they are numbered. Split A. My goodness. Now, 
these are very well carved out. You can see look, that they want to escape, so there aren't, there isn't too much tagging. Um, but as I say, what the uh, video instructions do say is just make lots of space to get these out and see what you've got. So uh, yeah, that's A. That's I believe the bottom. That's where you start off the lower section of the of the boat. Upside down. So, wow! Look at these details here. Um, decking, probably for the uh, aft castle poop deck or whatever it's called. I'm not a nautical person, so if you're nautical, please feel free to correct me on any term I get incorrect. Those are struts to put by the uh, the sides, the walls of the ship as you build them up. So that's the the, the strutting that keeps everything level inside. You can see those struts, how they are going to fit into these side sections here. Can you see those? There we are. So you build up one by one, whoops, build up one by one these planks on the side. And then these indentations will line up and the struts on the previous sprue will fit into those grooves. And that's gonna it's gonna happen first time, I'm confident. Can you, can you feel there's also <clears throat> a lot of excitement, there's a little bit of fear in this, but but what I've got faith in is that this is gonna be a very well-made model because the ones I've made so far have been extremely well made, they've been um you know they looked complicated but easy to put together uh, with a little bit of common sense, a little bit of guidance from the internet, and actually I've not found a problem. So these are very much the same thing. These are I think as soon as we get above the first deck these are separated you can see they're separated so you've got space for a gun to poke out so you imagine these on top of each other forming a forming a sandwich and on top of each other forming a sandwich and a wall these are the gaps where your guns poke out they are going to be gun ports there you go a portal for a gun someone should um, someone should use that I, th I think that's a good I think that's a good saying more of the same here uh, more planking with the strutting so it's probably lower because there's more of that uh, for the bottom there these I don't know what these are yet That'll be oh I know what those are those are the back so um, you put these on the back of the boat and then the uh, the you put those on the back of the boat and the uh, the planking here fixes to the rear and it's the guide to keep everything in place so everything meets at the front like so and this is the rear section so actually that forms that all this planking when it's built up forms the the bow of the ship itself so there we go that's very clever indeed similar thing on this sprue and also now we're starting to see the detail for stairs etc deck. Wow. Wow. As I say, this is part excitement, part abject fear. Um, this, you know, this, 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 this ship, when it's completed, it's even going to have removable sections. You can take this top deck off. This won't be affixed to the bottom half of the ship. And then also, this uh, a lot of this aft castle, like the, um, the, the, the quarters where the captain would stay at the back of the ship, again comes off so if you have models you've got 28 mil models you know like um, I don't know Warhammer or um, is it Blood and Plunder I think is a, is, a, is a game out there at the moment Saga I guess Saga's um, got different periods now I think attached to it so we might see we might see Saga cover there so you know 28 mil AD&D &D, obviously Dungeons and Dragons um, AD&D show my age there aren't I um, uh, you can put models on and fight them against each other or, or, or do other role playing um, or, or, or war gaming because you can take the the, the, the tops off the crew off the of the the ship itself and fight under the deck so you can fight down through decks from boarding a ship and that's stunning isn't it and I say you can fight your way to the crews uh, the 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 officers quarters and the captain's quarters as well so that's just that's just ruddy exciting I think so next 
next. Ooh, my goodness. These will just come out of the packaging. There we are. It's very small. Yeah. Okay, so um, that looks like banisters. For something, I'm going to guess. I don't know what they are. Oh, those are probably rings to put on the on the mast and rigging, though I don't know. I don't know. As I say, I've never put one of these together before. I've never done anything like this before. I, I am, I'm going to use the pun again. I'm all at sea. And these are different boards. It's a different colour. Oh, no, is it? No, no, no. This is thick board still. So this is just, uh, this is just, this is, um, Things like uh, mast restraints, I, I think those will be. Um, I don't know what those are. Uh, covers for hatches. Um, again, I don't know what those are, but though that's probably the, the way that's done. It's probably built up for, to, to do something, though I don't know what that is yet. Stunning. So these are detail sprues. These are slightly thinner. Um, I think it might be two millimeters. I don't know. I'm not going to measure them, but uh, yeah. Um, uh, but these are, are more detailed sprues. So there are some very detailed parts here. Again, some frighteningly detailed parts. Um, again, half these. I don't know what these are at all. And um, that I'm going to guess. Those are the windows for the um, quarters of the officers and the captain. I would imagine. Those are those. Oh, I know what those are. I think those are gun carriages. Those little wheels. There must be like four wheels because they'd be. I'm assuming, you know, under a deck, you wouldn't have massive wheels for a gun carriage, would you? You'd have like little wheels so that the guns can can move back once they're fired and they'd just be drawn straight back into place with ropes, wouldn't they? So I imagine that those are gun carriages and, um, and the wheels for the gun carriages. Stunning, stunning. I. I don't know. I. I I don't think I'll cry, but uh, they may be jolly close. So yeah, 24 cannon. We'll see, all metal. There's a touch hole just there, which isn't on the other side of it. So great detail. Now if I were to buy a 28 mil scale cannon, because on the sprue there is a, uh, there's a gun carriage for these. If I wanted to buy that, it will be three, two, two, three pound a pop. For, for a model of a, a, a cannon in that scale, there's, well, there's 24 sitting there. So what's that time? Uh, 48 quid to 60 odd pounds worth of, of miniature just sitting there and in the wooden gun carriage. So uh, I think that's quite good value for a kit just based on the neat little cannon that you get um, without the without the main um, that the main body of the ship and, 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 and all that that uh, entails. And then the last of the detail sprues, Ooh. we have a very snazzy look at that. I've got the, the wheel, of course, the wheel. I'm going to be looking forward to that. I may try another conversion. Oh, I don't know what that is. What's that? I don't know. Is it a capstan? I've no idea. Wow, just looking stuff at, the, at this stuff and not even understanding what half of it is. And I find that very exciting too. I find that extremely exciting. Is that an anchor? It's a large anchor, that is, yes. So there we go, so that is the kit. So that's one. Two. Three. Oh, I was good with the estimation of 10 in the end. 
Well, I made lots of estimations, so I'm just taking credit for a good estimation now. One of my many estimations was 10. There are 11 sprues here. And with regards to fittings, is that what we call them? The extra, extra bits, shall we call them? That's the, uh, that's the technical term. Um, the kit comes with this rather wonderful bag. Ooh, feel that. Here are the batteries, the power cells, the, the engines to any any pre-steam ship and you know some of the post-steam ships too um the masts of course we hold themselves are different gauges and lengths two gauges of dowling and again all different lengths so there are lots of different mast configurations i would imagine and again i don't know uh, because i'm not nautical nautical um savvy i'm not trained in nautical parlance in the terminology but my guess is that uh, in these times in these age, ages of sale that uh, mask configurations probably wouldn't stay the same i don't know would they would they change it's a matter of carpentry i guess isn't it great so i've looked at a few of the instructions I've got some tools to help me you know, you know, Metal ruler with a square on the side, set square essentially, can be really helpful. And a bit of a file thing, I haven't got any memory boards or anything, so I'm going to use some needle files. Be really careful with the metal on the wood, I think. So, yeah, here we, here we go. Um, wow. Whew, here we go. Sprue D, look for level two. <clears throat> That's level one. Level one, very simple, level one. And you look for level two, building level two on top of level one, perhaps logically. Yeah, back piece. Deck, I think. Yeah. The main under deck, anyway. Times three, yes. Which is level three. I feel I can't quite see enough to make sure there's a little lip all the way around because we're going to have hatches that go down into these holes and these lips will catch the hatch. You don't actually have to glue the hatches shut, which I think is great for role playing. So uh, I know it's, you know, the party go down to the lower deck. What do you see? And do they see the hatches off? Do they notice? Do they notice adventures? Well, we'll soon see, won't we? I was say, you just drop that in, look. Hatch. There you go, super. And then it just comes out. So now we glue on <coughs> this, because all this is... Level three. It's got these two pieces. It's got essentially a frame that we're going to be building the um, first two parts of the uh, hull from so, uh, the video. Um, I, I, I was counting along these, these notches to see which one the frame goes into, these little holes. Um, but then, kind of on looking at it, really, it's the only ones that they fit. Obviously, that's too thin, that's too thick, goes in perfect there. So it's not too hard, it's as easy as I thought it would be. That fits in there, that 
it's an egg ring so I'm going to go and glue that now stunning build up at the side. Now we're looking for the next big deck. There we go. Main deck. Look at that. Very impressive. There she comes. Lovely. I'm just going to see if this fits. I think. Oh yes. These little there can you see them just on there little holes on the top there you can probably see them better underneath so we've got the um yeah it's got the holes along the line you got these holes inside these holes along the line there you've got these little holes inside and they are for these tabs on the under frame and that I believe is how I think it's gonna come off and on Once the ship's built, so that you can remove the decks to play underneath on the lower decks to your heart's content. Make sure I place them correctly. Let's see if I have. Hmm. The truth, really, yes. yes. Ooh, yep, yep, yep. Ooh, is it? No, it is. Yes! Ha ha ha! guide says just um, just let that dry now so I'll let that dry and uh, move on to the next sections okay. so that's ready and that's all built up the seat nicely on there so a secret and safe these struts here. So these are the struts over which we build the gun pots and on top of which I think we'll probably be laying the upper deck. So I'm going to give those a little check so make sure they're square. Like so, it's a little ruler. Like so. Make sure they feel right. This intricate looking set here. So we see what level we're up to. It's actually illustrated there. So it's on level six currently. It's written on the bottom there. On the, the pieces. There we go. So we're on level six. So we look for level seven. There we go. Level seven. Okay. <clears throat> and level seven. The head of the ship, the bow of the ship. I'm going to take that out first. Lay that to the front. Let's see. That's going to go there. Little, little guides as well. These are really good. Some of my Tarkops does really well. It's like little guides. If you can see those little lines there. So you just put them up to, up to there. So if you didn't push those, uh, if you didn't have those guides, you wouldn't know where to place the front of the ship so that it, you know, each each level comes out and over in the correct way to get the right curvature so very nutty design there So 
So that's number 10. Level 10 done. On to building up. So the gunport's finished now, so it's on to building up the rest of the Harlin Long sections. There we go. 11, 12, and 13. That should bring us up to the top here, I think. On to the next levels. Here we are, up to level 15. It's really looking like a ship now, isn't it? Look at that. Take some of this PVA off my finger. Oh, beautiful. Don't know why. I'm enjoying rubbing my hands down it. It's just nice and smooth and beautiful and ship-like. Look at that. As we prepared earlier, the next deck, the top deck, or second deck, I don't know, um, will hopefully seat, because that's how we prepared it, that's how we directed to prepare it by the Dark Ops instructions. That should seat on top here somewhere, if I find the right. There we go. There we go, because uh, the instructions told me to prepare by letting the, the, the frame inside dry, the top deck easily, once I find the right first hole, easily, Oh, that's, the, that's the hatches inside coming out. Um, easily uh, sits on top of the ship and is removable easily as well, like so, um, as we'll come on to. So we're at the stage there, 15. We, we've, we've, we've got the main deck slips on nicely. Um, uh, as I know, no feeling of, of getting somewhere with the ship now. We're going to start the captain's quarters, I think, or officer's quarters, I don't know which at the uh, stern of the ship, at the rear of the ship. Um, and I believe that we're gonna need, let's put that down and move it around there. We just need this here plate, like so. Oh, that's out easily, doesn't it? It's great. Then um, these windows here, windows. And then most of the pieces off the left here, I'll take these out off shot. And you see the oh, beautiful detailing too. Can you, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so I'll put white behind it so you can see it perhaps. I don't know if that'll make it easier. There. Look at that. Beautiful, beautifully done. Lovely design. Uh, yeah, I'll take those out. Hmm. Hmm. So... Actually, if this is a window, that clads over that. Because so I think this that's the inside, that's the cladding. Hmm. So I've had one of those one of those ideas, the ones that seem to be good at the time. So we'll see how it pans out. I'm doing the captain's quarters at the moment there we go and uh, the way dark ops do it very cleverly is they've layered the effect it's something that they do gives you a bit of kind of 3d effect uh, makes makes the model feel like it's got real substance so that's the basic cabin as it were uh, you can see the details on the inside then we've got this section here that goes on the outside like so then we have this beautiful um, trellising is that what it's called? I don't know. But the, 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 this feature here. Now you, you'll, you'll notice, and very rarely do I do it, but on this occasion I've pre-painted these because I want to do something and I'll muck it up if I paint over the top of it. So I've, uh, I've pre-painted this like so. There we are, to bring that out. I may, I may do that brown before I put it on, but for explanation purposes, here we are. Um, like I said, so it works like that. So what I'm thinking of doing is uh, putting glass in. Because it's layered, if I put some plastic acrylic sheeting in between, it'll look like look like glass. So we hardly noticeable. Really, I'm just doing it because I want to do it. The, um, the 
features are so small it's probably not noticeable, but it's something I've just I've just hankered after. It's just something I've decided I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna have a go with that. I might paint these brown before I put them. There we go, I've undercoated the uh there. It doesn't even have to be a you know great coverage, just make it nice and brown so that it uh, looks good when there's stuff over it. So my plan is to Put some transparent plastic just there, like that, um, and then sandwich it in between the panel there. So where to get plastic from? Well, I've not bought any. I've literally just had had the thought at the end of last night before I start this morning. So what I decided to do is try. I've got these um, blister packs for for modelling products. And these are these are Drop Zone Commander, which I play as well. Um, it's a kind gift. Thank you to Pezpu who gave me this. Gave me the, a load of Shaltahari uh, models for, for Christmas, so th uh, uh, for my birthday for Christmas. So thank you for that, sir. It's very kind. So I'm going to use the cards and the, the models, and I'm going to game with them. Fan that's going to be fantastic. What I'm also going to do, look, it's the command cards. Brilliant, great stuff. I'm also going to use this plastic. It's very thick. I don't know if I don't know if this is going to work. I really don't. But what I'm going to do is try, and that's that's what's going to happen. So uh, let's see if I've got enough plastic for a start. So I'm just going to cut. There we go. Push it down. And, um, we're looking at enough plastic to go over there. And obviously, it doesn't have to be as big as the whole section. So I think there's certainly enough to do that. And there and there. And if not, I've got a spare smaller blister pack here. Commander model, and uh, I think that will be enough to create panels for there. So, uh, right, let's let's give that let's give that a go. It should be just enough. Oh, just, just enough. Side of the captain's quarters. So I've dry brushed the gold leafing on the outside. Obviously, I'll be uh, touching that up, putting more depth on it as we go along. I say that's just so I don't have to put so much uh, paint onto the piece uh, now that I've put glazing behind it, so the paint doesn't go down the holes and mess up what I've done. Brilliant. Right, let's attach this to the ship. On the, the main deck slots onto these these arches here. There we go. Let's get the nub on the top. So if I've done it correctly, that should just yeah. <laughs> it's a case of finding the first hole. But once you've done that, everything there we go, just slips in. That's really good. Okay, that's there. Uh, partly, you know, I'll take a little bit of credit in that I followed the instructions well, but really the, the credit for that. Um, uh, for that fine detail of getting it all uh, in, in, in line and in sync is actually Dark Ops design. Now you'll notice here we've got etching, diamond pattern, and the etching diamond pattern there. Now I might take the camera off actually. So there's the diamond etching, and obviously the side there. And there's the diamond etching on the main deck. Now when we put this on, I'm going to be gluing it in a bit. Essentially, the inside of that should line up like so to the edge of the etching, and the etching itself should line up too. So, there we go. There we go. It's not easy to see on the camera, we're just wibbling that about. There we go. So, that is as far as I can tell. So, my eyes aren't what they should be. That's pretty much it, must be cut. On the same board, I don't know. Uh, no, it can't be because it's actually on the board there, isn't it? So there we go. <laughs> Old cap there. Yeah, same way. No, no, it's done separately. It's etched separately on purpose to um, provide ease of um, construction. I'm going to 
remove the top deck in a in a moment there's obviously a lot of the pva glue pva glue just doesn't stay in one place does it uh, does it commanders generals and adventurers it just it just goes everywhere <laughs> so some of that will have moved and if i'm not careful i'll have glued <laughs> And have glued the back end of the top deck to this and that's not the point the point is to have that removable so with me satisfied that's down nice and firmly and then just a quick check to make sure that it's in the correct place which i'm reasonably satisfied of Maybe a little bit of movement there and that's great that looks great I'm going to remove the top deck. There we go. Let's have a look. Now, was it a good move? Yes, look, look, there's little pops there, PVA glue. Now, it wouldn't have held it there forever, but obviously I'd have risked damaging the model, removing that later. So uh, so that's uh, that was uh, advice given by Smudge on the Dark Ops website on the construction video for this. So that's very good advice. Thank you for that, Smudge. So with the shell of the captain's quarters now glued onto the back of the frigate, that stuff's staying pretty nice and firm and secure. I'm going to go on to the main deck. There we go. That's dried on. I'm going to stick that to the back. And that now, because I've got a guide, just fits perfectly on. Look at that. Don't go sideways because of the knots underneath. Perfect. We're going to go on to that. Um, we're going to start building the cabins before the captain's quarters there. So I think you're going to go through a little corridor there. Have two little cabins there. I think that may be how it works. I'm not sure yet. So we're going to use this sprue here. All these wonderful panelling pieces uh, we're going to use for that. So that's really exciting. So get on with that. So the parts of the internal cabin, cabins here are all paired off of the detail sprue of the thinner MDF. So there we go, they all go together like so. Like so, it's got a lot of pegs on it. That, that's gonna go in between something I'm going to guess. That doesn't. That's a door. So there we go. Yeah, that's correct. That's not in the right place, so that will go back there. There we go. See, it all fits. It's hard to make a mistake, really, because if you're trying to pop something in the wrong hole, it won't fit, which is uh, which is great. And guide holes there on the inside. They look great, little windows. Looks wonderful. Like so. You have to glaze those as well. And there we go. That fits perfectly as well. So there we go. Then I think that these two parts fit in the middle, like so. So good, I'm gonna do it like that. There we go, another example of glazing that no one's ever going to see, but I know it's there. So the advice is to make the cabins up first. Put that the right way around. Nope, there we are. Like so the other side in like so and put that over top and then drop it all in to the hole so having built up the uh, inside of the cabins there we're going to start building the walls between those and the outside of the ship 17 to is that 20 one, I think it says on the video 1722 there, but 1721 says on the video, so that's fine. So I'm going to do that now. Yeah, so there's 17, it looks like it fits around what I've already made as well. So, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the wall comes out further than the cabin. And obviously, I've got to be careful here because it's something I've done, I've created a problem, a challenge. In that, by putting glazing in this part, I've made that part thicker. So, if we look here. And we'll see that this part, 17, fits neatly onto the, the wall there. And it's tougher going on there. So I've got to be careful not to break the little nub there. 
just thumb it in carefully. And it does work, it does work. And if it becomes an issue, I can just, with a file, shave out a little bit of the, the hole for the wall to go into so as not to break it. So good, I'll get on with that. So with gun ports on this upper deck done, we continue to build the side up to the rear uh, from pieces from, I think that's Sprue Eye. There we go. So it's all gone dark. Um, let everything dry off. I'll shave that down a little bit at the top. So that fits more nicely now. That's really good. Uh, so it's on to Sprue H, I believe. There we go. Sprue H. There we go. Ooh, there we go. Advanced film making camera work type stuff there. Um, I th I th there are handrails here. So you can move backwards to forwards, but the handrails are in the instruction video the dark ops do i noticed they don't do the handrails first and i think it's probably so you don't smash them up when you do them they're rugged themselves but you know what i mean they're a little bit more delicate so i think we do this kind of wall here it's kind of a front extremity of where the crew go so i think that's what we do next and i think that's level 17 next i'm going to get 17 out and put that on yeah there's these d-shaped parts there. So right, I'm going to get those out and put those on. So yeah, onto the prow of the top deck. I think and these aren't numbered. The instruction video says that really they just kind of go together. Um, biggest to littlest or littlest to biggest. The first one will be obvious because there are going to be guide Look, there's a guide there. There you go, you can see the outline around the, the etched planking there. So the first part will be self-explanatory and then they'll increase or decrease in size after that. So we'll, we'll soon to see. So uh, we've finished a lot of the front of the ship now. Uh, we've built up a wall there. We've put this front set of pieces on the prow. There's a gap there, I think, probably for Mars to go from that hole. You can see that hole there, I don't know. It's a little hole down there, a little indentation, probably through that gap and out to the front. And then there'll be cells that come back up onto the main mast, uh, onto the, the, the forward mast there. I don't know what that would be called, that mast. Um, someone might tell me in the comments, or I might find out on the wise and rich and intelligent internet. I might put the answer there in some snazzy graphic that looks like waves or fog or something nautical. That would be awfully clever, wouldn't it? So now I come on to... Um, here, I don't know if you see these. You can see the etching there. There we go, it's etching there. And that should guide me in. I think that uh, these pieces here. And they're numbered. There's no number under here. So I'm assuming that I'm in the right area though, because they do seem to fit. And again, if, the, if it doesn't fit, the etchings will soon tell me that they don't fit. So that's fine. Um, but these are numbered. So, uh, yeah. 2021 20, and I'm assuming that's the top piece because it's not numbered to cover up the numbers so no one sees them in the finished product so I put those on on now I'm assuming that those go in the middle because those are again the cannonball holders just like on the rear of the main deck just like that so uh, that's going to be fun to put together now next rails from one of the detail sprues I think this is Okay, there we are. Trellised railings, two halves. There's a slight difference in where the pegs are placed between the sets. Some are bang in the middle, some are just slightly off to the side. I don't even know if that's visible on the camera, but there are slight differences in where the notches are.
and the top deck here has come off of Sprue B. Time for stairs. Time for stairs. There's some stairs. Look. E. On B. Okay. So that's the steps put on. Gosh, this is exciting. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's, that's that done. Um, <clears throat> what next? I think that's the main body. That's the main deck. And that fits like so. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. And then top deck goes there like so and then it's time to build the walls around the top deck great I think we're starting that's numbers this 29 there we go so we're going to be going 30 and upwards I think I think it's sprue H also sprue I even the back end of layer 32 hiding on is the last piece of Sprue G. Here we are doing the uh, the upper deck. There we go. We've got these. I think that's thirty-two. There we are. I think that's thirty-two. Yep, thirty-two. These look at that, that looks complicated, doesn't it? Oh my goodness, it's on uh, sprue I, but uh, I think I, my guess is it just kind of works out in a way. Um, let's see, I think these bits here, you can see the way they're angled, I think they'll correspond there, like so, like that, and they'll go around to those little etchings there. Ooh, you see, this? there we get etchings where there are gun ports. So I think that'll work okay. Uh, and those will go, they're square, so I think they're going to go around the back again. You can see we've got gun ports there. So I think it's all going to work out. It looks complicated, but the way it's set out, I think it was pretty much directing me where to go next. So, uh, yeah, good, let's do that bit next. to the bowels of the ship. Yes, so it's time to start on the cool little details. And I think the first thing the video suggests on the Dark Ops YouTube channel is the capstan. I think this is a capstan, is that what it's called? Oh, so, look at that. So just uh, slide on like that. Good. And these be having a cross in the bottom like that, across the bottom there. My guess is that they fit into each other somehow. Indeed, exactly like that. Wow. Oh, that just goes in flush. Wow. There's, there's no need to glue that. Look, that's dead firm. And there's a again a cap on the top the wrong size it might be that one and here it is look at that firm firm I tell you there's no particular place on the boat to put the capstan, actually, so I assume you just place it somewhere. So these parts are actually for the anchors. I think one of my anchors dropped out a while back. There we are. Anchors, there we go. These are uh, rack type affairs. Well, I'll be one if 
Hang on, if these little racks here. I think there's two for the top deck, two for the bottom deck. Ship, isn't it? Look there, look, gun pots. Ace. Um, okay. So it took me a while to work out where the column, the uh, for, for the wheel, is. It's uh, there, I believe, on B. There we go. Is R. Wheels are on. Well, the wheel, I don't know if it's two sections of the same wheel, I don't know what the term is. On K. There we go. It can come out relatively easy actually. There we go. Look at that. I'll notice. It's just a bit light behind it. It's actually, there's holes there. If that's visible. Yeah, there we go. It's visible. There's actually holes through the wheels there. So. I'm clever. <laughs> I can drill through those and hopefully make the wheel turn, which would be great. So I've uh, drilled through here. There we go. Look, drill through the little column with my needle drill. Really careful because there's not much there. I would actually suggest, I don't even know what gauge that is, but I suggest using a thinner one to be honest. Luckily, I've not damaged the column itself. No, that happened. Not with your luck. I've got quite a good hole. That's good. So there we go. So the idea is to get. I've got a sprue here from uh, Mantic. Actually, it's um, undead. I think it's skeletons. Yeah. And on this undead sprue is like half a spear, look. Half a spear. Half a spear. So there we go. I'm going to take that off. Like so. Shaving. I'll test, see if that goes through the column. Yep. As it does. Oh, quite tight, that's quite good. I don't think I want it to. Moving about in there too much, that's good. That's all right. So that goes through. So put these two wheels, or part of the wheel. I'm going to put those either side of the column. Put the shaft. In my fingers, the column. And put the shaft through, so the wheels move. So um, I need to cap those with something. So I've chosen these two round pieces of off cut to put on the back and the front. They're different sizes. It won't matter. So what we do Let's spear in from the back through the wheel, which is the nicer side, the burnt side is nicer outside. Let's put that through like so. So there we have a word. 
working wheel. However, we still want to put a cap over it. There we go, that's pretty good. There we go, a working wheel. So let that dry. Good, look at that. Then that goes. So this is what I've done so far. I've also done some preliminary painting as you might be able to see in the terrible light that is my front room studio at. Mm. Throat sore land. So here is what I've done so far. Um, I've given it an undercoat and I've put some ink oil on there I, as I think I mentioned earlier put some gold on the back there I've started to paint the the decking there in a nice kind of lighter brown sandy colour and I've also started to paint the inside it's all fitting together really well there we go that's the oh, the castle if that's what they're called I've painted the floor white I've had a look at some videos of the HMS Victory and this diamond pattern here on the Victory is actually black white black white in kind of a, a chessboard draft board stroke checkerboard configuration so one day when I have the time I may if I'm feeling very brave put each alternate uh, diamond there and make it make it black and use a different brown and some red for the internal panelling as well, so that's, that was really fun to do. And then finally we've done white inside, also looking at, uh, looking at some more pictures and YouTube videos of the internals of some frigates. I've noticed a lot of the internal walls are white washed, so I've done a bit of white wash there. Actually, it looks like whitewash because I've just dry brushed the white on there. Again, decking inside different colours of browns for the internal fixtures and fittings. And so that's where I've got to so far. So now it's time. We've got these wonderful gun ports. So put a little bit of metal on top there for the metal fixings. If you can see that. There we go. Um, it's time to do some cannon. Four completed gun couches. So here she is, armed to the teeth. There we go, the cannon. So uh, next, we're going to look at the masts. So let's. Uh, Let's take the guns off first. These are there. there they are. So I'll put that aside for a second. I don't know. Let's see if we have any holes there. The master, we're going to construct something to put in them. So I've got the dowling here for the, the, uh, the masts and the. Is it the yard arms that go across them? I don't know. Someone again, I'm sure, will put me right. Uh, the cross pieces for the mast. I'm starting with the three main masts. They are, I think, called the foremast. The main mast and the mizzen mast, the rear mast. So uh, I think that's how it how it goes. Um, we're not just putting the mast into the deck directly. They have fittings. So we have a number of um, how to put it shoring for shoring for, for, for making the assembly stronger. Uh, and these did exist on real ships as I've seen them on um, YouTube and, and other valuable academic sources. So we have. Two sets here for the two smaller masts and the main mast here. I believe these are the fittings. So I'm going to take two of those out, like so. The other ones in for the moment. Now, these are built to fit 
onto this mast here, but there's not a lot of tolerance. It's simply not going to go first off. And I believe the idea is to shave down the mast itself. There we go. It does fit on, but I'm not meant to uh, not meant to force that. So what I'll be doing is I'll be filing out the hole there to make that bigger. And there, I mean, so you can see how thin that is. That, that might snap if I force it, you see, so that'd be a bad idea. And I'm going to get a little bit of sandpaper or filing to that to make that smoother, to make the uh, to make these rings fit over better. So good, I'll get on with that. It's a lot better. It's not MDF this, so let's get a bit more dust. Good. It's just um, it won't fit. Let's have a look. See how we're doing. That's oh, it's fitting quite well. I'm still not going to force it, but that tells me I'm on the right track. That's what that does. So I'm going to find my files. I'm going to find a round one. Is there a round one? That feels round. Or do I use a rounded one? I'll use a round one. There you go. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that goes. Oh, lovely. Sorry for being so excited about this, commanders, generals, and adventurers, but that's a really nice fit now. It's a bit, a bit tight there. It's just a little bit more to be sure. That's good and it's still it's not too much of that I've done okay there because it's not too much you know it's uh, still quite fit and snug so that's good so let's have a look at this one next and it's going on pretty well it's a little bit of shaving and it should be okay that is perfect how good is that so yeah these are the supports from uh, screw J uh, so we can take these bigger supports out here. You see them there, got the small ones there for the two other masts. It's after the, mig, uh, the main mast. There you go. So I'll shave those down a bit. Now, put this one on first. Which way up? I don't know. I'm going to put that way up first. There you go, like so. Like that. Goes on next. It's got little holes, and it's got little notches. Like so now some of that needs to be left, I think, to go into the actual into the actual deck. And I've got these I've got little notches there. Little hooks there, and the hooks will go into the notches there, and the um the, bit the sticks out there will go into the hole there. Let's see how that works. I've got to first I guess I've got to do a, a test one to measure. How far apart they have to be. So I'm going to pop one in like so. Then I'm going to kind of actually maybe I should just put those all in there and then move it down. That might be the idea. Well, it does seem to work. Do you know? I think I'm going to try that. And then glue that into place there. Like so. So I'm going to try that. It's my amazing surprise when I push them down, like so, they just fit straight into the holes. So uh, if I turn the holes right, uh, the right way, of course, and they just fit straight in. So there we go. Look at that. That's the assembly. That would just fit in there. Now, do I glue that in? You can glue that in, or do I make the um, do I make the mask removable? I'll probably make the removable at least and put the rigging on, and then maybe I'll, I'll try and work out a way of making them removable so I can transport the whole model more more easily. So yeah, I might do that. Great, so it's the same process for the other masts. We need uh, one of these big ones here, like so. One's here, here's one I believe. 
and then half of these. Then conveniently put into two two sets. Second one. Make that a little bit. Make that a bit more, shall we? And the last one. Very good, lovely. So there we go. There's the last mask. Now I actually found, if you can see there, there's not a lot of space on the ring. See how far that goes down there? Yeah, there we go. There's one. There's not a lot of space on that ring. So I didn't, when I was making the ring fit, the mast, I didn't file the ring down. I actually just attempted to the mast and sanded that down and used a round file as well to really move the, move the matter as it were with the, um, with the sandpaper to finish it off to make it nice and smooth. There we go, right, so that's going to go in now. Ball mast, there we go. Okay, so next we're going to look at building up the masts from the, the root. It's got the roots here. Now, we're looking at how we build those up um, with you know, fighting tops on, which looks amazing, doesn't it? And obviously, we'll have the secondary masts on top of the first ones, and also, of course, fitting. Yard arms. So I'm going to start. Up. I'm going to do the mizzen mast last. Um, I'm going to do the foremast first, I think, and take out this sort of top fighting deck. Is it a deck? You know what I mean. Fighting top, if that's what it's called. Again, feel free to correct me. I don't mind at all. I'm sure it has a real and proper name. In cases of using that as almost an adapter, and you put that on the top like so. Your thinner mast at the top, the uh, yeah, the, the hole there, you see, is very small, like so. So we need a thinner mast to go there. So what length? I don't know. Let's have a look at the illustration, shall we? Now, it says on the video, you can use any configuration you like. Might even have to change the configuration of a mask, kind of mid-journey, I, I don't know. I don't know, really. And what do you think on the illustration that the top mast for the full mast looks about the same size, like that, as the main? That looks correct to me. It fits nicely in there. Now, of course, we need to do cross pieces. There are two little adapters there, which I think are yeah, those go on. I think those go go on the cross mast or the plates. Not plates. Which one do we think? Adventurous commanders, and captains. We think there. goes along through it so here we are brilliant and I think that goes on to the round bits points forward pops in there like so that's very snug there we go didn't even need to uh, didn't even need to uh, sand that on there that's pretty good there we are and of course I mean you can set your set where you like I mean, you can be set you can have your set pointed that way well, that way, obviously, they put them where the wind would catch, I would imagine. So, there we go. Leave that to dry. Oh, there's actually little rings as well. You put on the masts by way of 
sure they have a, a real life application here. But they're pretty much what you like, kind of a decoration really. So we've got the um, part at the bottom, like so. Um, with the rings that they've put over, like so. They can actually move, which is great. So I'm going to leave them like that. See what they were for in history, perhaps. Then may maybe move them. Then we have that pointing forwards, I think. that will, We'll say that's forwards, like so. So I'm going to glue that in. There she is. Lovely. Then this part, you can see there's little rings there. The rings, I think, go to the correct part of the ship, either bow or stern. Is this the foremast? Um, it's going to go to the bow. It's going to go to the front of the ship. So the, the, the little holes there, there, go to the front. Now this, giving it a try, giving it a try already, um, is pretty tight. So there. I don't even need really to glue that. Again, I can change my configuration later. Now, that'll go up because that's going to fit into this part. They're going to lock into each other. Pull that down a bit, like so. There we are. Straight. Lovely. Then, this top, that points forwards. A bit further down, and we'll start tying stuff into there later. Okay. It's all adjustment, really, isn't it? So, always careful. That squeaking could be wood fatigue, if that's the word for it. Could be the wood fatiguing. We'll break it. Squidgel, squidgel. Scientific term that. Nautical term. Squidgel, squidgel. Lovely. So look at that. That's my first mast. Like so. So next, the mast at the front. The kit, the sprue, calls it the sprit top mast. So there we go, I didn't know it was called that. So essentially the boom comes out there um, and allows you to affix a uh, spinnaker, is that the word? A, a, a kind of triangle stay, sail from, from that to the ball mast. So I'll find the right down for that.
So yes, looking at the, the main mast on the instruction video. So we go, there's the main mast on, a little bit lopsided, I'll obviously um, straighten everything up, glue everything into place eventually. Um, the reason I've not done that yet is because I kind of want to work out how I'm going to transport the ship itself. I'm going to work out how I'm going to take the ship apart for transport, you know, am I, with all the rigging for example, in place, am I going to be able to take the masts off because I really do want to put rigging on this. It'll just make it look, I mean, it looks great now, but it'll look absolutely stunning with rigging, I think. Inside the ship, many sections. We'll see. Oh, steady as she goes. Actually, I'll take this piece off, It'll make it easier to show you. There we go. Off. You see these. Holes here, there we are. See these holes there. They're for tying rigging in. Now, oh, personally, I want a fleet of them. Um, I think most games that I'll be playing with them won't, won't be many ships involved. So I want at least, I want three or four of these. I do. Don't tell anyone, will you? Don't. Some people might see that as sad. So I'm whispering, so don't let anyone know that I would like that many ships. But one can hope. Just the enjoyment of actually putting this together. It's been um, one heck of an experience putting it together. As I say, I'm by no means any kind of expert at modelling. And um, you know, it's been a real challenge for me to put this together. And uh, every piece of challenge that I've had, it's also been a great deal of fun. So there's the main mast on the ship. We've just got the rear mast. Is that the mizzen mast? I think that's called. Cool. Just that's complete now. And then, to be honest, the build will be almost done. Okay, and it's great. It's actually, lit. there you go. Main mast, foremast, and the split top mast. All actually noted there, so that's really good. See, then, I, then I've had a thought. You see, I've been looking at um, looking at lots of pictures of tall ships, um, the odd diagram of, of, of the way sails were were done on frigates at the time, uh, videos as well, really instructive. And I notice most of them they don't have a square rig at the back what they have actually is kind of one that points backwards and like i don't know how you describe it a um, a triangular type um sail so all i'm going to do is i'm going to push this cross piece back through like so keep the integrity of what's going on here so there we go, I've glued that, so that's pointing backwards. I'm going to carry on and put the square rig on the top. There we go, that's the last mast, that's the mizzen mast completed. Let's put that on the ship. Look 
at that. So that essentially is the kit built. Well, I think you'll agree. That looks extremely impressive. So let's just show us what we've got so far. There we go, as, we, as we've looked at before. You can still break the whole ship down. That's absolutely no problem with the masts in. So you can, essentially you can plonk that down on the tabletop like so. And um, continue your game. You know, you can have people in your game so you're role playing for example you can have people in the game fighting on board deck people fighting below decks people fighting on the aft castle and um, have that all going on at once with the models arrayed everywhere but as I say I think you'll agree that that is an amazing kit um, as I say with even the masks on still all perfectly playable Easy to put back together, look at that. No problem at all. I think the cans even moved on the decks when I did that. They're not they're not glued down or anything. It's just the fact that the wheels are the MDF and so is the boarding. So they just tend to stick in place and don't move very much. There we go. You know, you can even move those I guess. So there we go. Great. So I'll uh, I'll come back after um, I've, I've given the basic paint job to the masts. So commanders, generals, adventurers, and dare I say it, captains, the finished frigate. And what a marvellous exploit this has been. And a, a, a most enjoyable time putting this together. It's taken me about three weeks here and there. Uh, a lot of time into it, but but well worth every second um, e expended bringing her to life, and, and I think she really does live um, in the way she's put together. The uh, genius really is Dark Ops. That's Dark Ops. There we go. That's that's the the front sheet that came with the box. That's Dark Ops, um, Dark Seas range. I think it's called the Sea Wolf. There we go. Twenty five, twenty four gun Sea Wolf, and that's uh, www.darkops.co. UK. I'll put a link, uh, as I say, into the description. Right over there, lovely. Oh, I think she's wonderful. Um, oh, I, I, I don't really know how to put into great words the fun that I've had. Um, she has the rigging now. I'll just go from the bottom up and take the top off. So even with all this rigging, she's still... There we go. Still able to be taken down. Um, there we go. That's the the under decks. There we are. Look at that. All the cannon in there. There is a capstan for them somewhere as well, which I made earlier. I'll put that on in the final. I've still not worked out where I'm going to put that yet. I actually may, might leave it. I might leave it loose so that I can put it wherever I want. So the cannon, which I've painted essentially silver well they came silver so I just painted it over silver again and then I dry brushed uh, black over the top um, so just a small amount of research I've done suggests that guns are often made of iron or brass um, and let's see these are the ones that actually came with the with the model as well aren't they amazing oh, I think they're stunning there we go I think they look great so yeah um so there, the metal cannon, 24 off. Um, I've left the gratings, let me see if I can take those off quickly. Um, I've left the gratings not glued in. Um, there might be a scenario uh, in a Dungeons and Dragons game or something where I want, there we go, easy to take off, uh, where, where I want the, uh, I want the adventurers to come down the, come down the ladder and, and, and see one of the tops off and it's up to them to notice or something like that so uh, I'm going to leave those off as a kind of a role playing piece um, you can see the white I've painted inside the uh, kind of sandy grey uh, sorry sandy brown grey sandy uh, brown that I've put on the, on the decking which I've replicated up top so that looks, um, that's the captain's quarters there you'll notice the glazing well you might notice the glazing 
There we go, I think. There we go, we can get glazing visible there on the camera. So there we go, that's the, the, the covered deck, as it were. So, uh, yeah, the uh, main deck of the, of the cabins goes on top there. So all that preparation we did at the beginning to make sure that it all was in line just works like that. So that's really good. And then... Um, this top deck. On top there. So I've rigged the masts and I've not over-rigged them yet. I'm obviously on a real ship. There would be a heck of a lot of rigging. There'd be uh, ladders to get up to the the different fighting tops and uh, to, to deal with the sails and stuff. And I've not put those on yet. Reason being is partly I want to learn to do, you know, the, that kind of triangle stepping that you see in all the movies properly. But mostly it's because this is going to be a wargaming piece. I'm actually going to play games with this. And I'm going to have trouble putting models on if there are too many ropes in the way. So part of this is very practical to move models around and also when you're looking at, at models in a, a role-playing or wargaming situation you're dealing with inches and centimeters a lot so you've also got to be able to put a ruler in there um which is going to be jolly difficult if um see if i've got a ruler yeah i've got one here which is going to be jolly difficult if there's too much rigging here but at the moment as you can see i can stick a ruler wherever i want on there now i'm going to avoid using a tape measure now can you guess why commanders captains adventurers and commanders i'm going to get all out here I'll go. Uh, uh, very eloquent can you imagine me putting that in there and then hooking by accident and then by accident whipping that shut it's it's a disaster waiting to happen isn't it so i i think i'm going to be using a ruler because it's far easier to control and I, I can knock it and i can damage stuff but i'm not going to kind of rip the whole thing over and cause a lot of kind of kinetic damage that i'm going to have with a tape measure so that's my tip of the day actually is to use a ruler when you're wargaming on one of these unless you're some sort of i don't know um role-playing ninja and you can use a uh, tape measure safely in which case good luck to you on that I am not nearly as dexterous you'll notice that what I've done is again this is just kind of my first go at a sail I've not done this before but I've wrapped up the sails rather than gluing them so I'm just doing this one hand and I tell you ladies and gentlemen it took me seven hands to put this together I actually had to take on DNA of an octopus. But it's okay, with seven hands I had one left with which to make tea. But then you're making tea with one hand left. Oh, it's just always inconvenient, isn't it? Let me see. So there we go. So the sail actually comes down like so. And then moves catches the wind and so I don't know if these are the right way around and, and uh, what I'm going to do next is maybe put uh, roping into the bottom I thought there's no point doing it just yet though because um, uh, because I'm just working out the mechanics of getting of getting sails up so uh, but that that was successful so I'll leave that down there for the moment what I can do there we go and then I'd be tying that off somewhere down there to keep everything uh, away and safe. So there we go. So uh, we've got a sail at the top there and then the first deck there. So that's the mizzen mast, the main mast. There we are. So there's a lot of sails up here. There we go. And again, if I can find it. all this simpler eventually so this is my first go I've never even 
built a boat like this before. And it's certainly the first time I've ever experimented with a sail. So, uh, okay. I hemmed these cells. These cells I just got from a haberdasher's in town. Uh, I just went in. I said, excuse me, I'm making sails for a ship. And these wonderful women at these <laughs> haberdashers, they just look at you and go, yeah, yeah, cool, no problem. <laughs> totally non -plus. You'd think, oh, weirdo, going into a haberdashery um, with <laughs> all these women with doing their sewing and knitting projects. They're hardcore women. They're like really um, clever and crafty in themselves. But um, you go in there looking... <laughs> Looking totally weird. Um, I say, you know, I want some cloth to make some sails, and they just go, "Hmm, I wonder what we'll do that." And they just take you to the right bit of uh, of material. I got, oh, it's yards of it. I got, it's it's absolutely yards. I've, I've not even used five percent of the material I got for a fiver. It, that this this white cotton, which is perfect for this, um, folds really well. You can see, even look, it keeps its shape like a sail. And this, this, you know, one day I'll I'll have these skills and make that a lot more. Um, good looking uh, but for the moment i think it looks amazing for a first attempt and as i say just go to a local haberdasher's and you know sewing shop material shop and just ask if you want any help i got this i got this roping from there as well um this is craft wool and you'll see it's just like a sandy color which i thought would be better than white or black uh, cotton and um i just wrapped it around a needle and put it through all the holes uh, as, as like a, sh a shuttle but yeah, so I was absolutely amazed. Went in with these women uh, and they just said, yeah, yeah, use use this, dear. And they were quite right. So you get a load of essentially crafting material for beggar all money. Um, and I got that really nice effect. So so there we go. That's my, <laughs> that's my advert for your local haberdashery. Go and use it. So all of these, all of these um, sales work in exactly the same way. And these are the worst sales that I did because these are the first ones that I tried. And I um, have got the rigging here, rope from the foremast to the sprit topmast. Uh, in the photos and videos I've seen, it's often it's like a spinnaker type sail or, or set of sails, like a triangular set of sails there, really like, like a big wind sock, really pulling the ship forward. Always looking full, like it's uh, um, creating thrust for that ship, and um, and they look amazing. And I'd love to to have a couple of those on. Um, I just haven't worked out how to deploy and roll them away yet, um, without putting too much stress on this, you know, quite light piece of roping for too long. So when I work out how to do that, um, y y y you know, be able to take off the sail and then roll it away neatly then then i'll put it on but i, I don't want to be able to I, I, I don't want to have to have the sails deployed all the time because this is a role-playing stroke a wargaming piece so i want the sails to be um collapsible so that i can um, put models on and, and maneuver them around properly but i also want all the sails to be deployable so that i can show off with them so there we go that's the that's my guided tour of the new HMS Dark Ops. So I would like to say thank you very much indeed for joining me as I've explored a new experience in my hobbying, uh, a kind of transition from just making up an army and putting it on a board to taking part in an artistic project perhaps that is the difference in this project to the ones that I've done before um, this is certainly the type of things that Dark Ops and other um, manufacturers out there are putting out at the moment some really high quality kits and Dark Ops particularly take a lot of pride and put a lot of effort into making a product just on flat boards look so alive so three-dimensional so um how would i put it so active i mean i can imagine myself on that ship making it work there we are so um there are ways that you can 
show appreciation or dismay about the videos that I'm making, um, you can click like and that would be really helpful just for my personal motivation uh, and my ego that would <laughs> that would help immensely um the, you know it spurs me on to making videos in the future i don't get paid for them or anything like that um it would just be positive motivation uh, it might motivate me to get a better cam for example because i just do these on my phone at the moment uh, it'd be lovely to get uh, some more equipment you can subscribe to the channel and then when I do uh, videos I don't do them too often I try and do one every so often and uh, so you won't be you won't be spammed with lots of uh, lots of videos unless you want lots of videos tell me <laughs> you can comment and tell me what you think of the projects and and uh, tell me if I'm horrible or if you like what we're doing here and stuff like that you can share the videos as well you can stick them on Facebook or other excellent internet platforms and just share them about so there we go finally from the top let's look down should we look down there we go oh can you imagine being up there in days past on the fighting deck looking down waiting to hear what your captain's going to say oh my goodness yes that would be quite a thing so all I can say in conclusion is, uh, again, thank you for watching. And um, when the sea's rough, steer steady. <laughs>